Hey friend, I'm Pete Hendrickson and I want to tell you about something I think you'll find rather curious. In 1925, during the height of the Roaring Twenties, and with more than 45 million of the 16th Amendment adopting generation in full-time gainful occupations, fewer than 4.2 million United States individual income tax returns were filed. You got that, right? Twelve years after the 16th Amendment was adopted, fewer than one in ten full-time earners imagined him or herself to be required to even fill out a 1040, much less pay a tax on his or her earnings. Look at the data compiled by the United States Census Bureau. Forty-one million six hundred and fourteen thousand two hundred and forty-eight gainful workers in 1920. Forty-eight million eight hundred and twenty-nine thousand nine hundred ninety in 1930. We can split the difference and find forty-five million in 1925, and that's just in the continental United States. Now, look at the number of tax returns filed that year. Huh? Only 4.171 million returns filed, with more than 45 million Americans gainfully occupied. So, those other 41 million plus men and women just went off to prison for tax evasion or failure to file, right? Actually, no. This nine-tenths of the earning population just went on with their normal lives as prosperous, productive, and free Americans, untaxed and untroubled by the IRS. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that the personal tax exemption was so astronomical that only the idle rich made enough to reach the filing threshold. But that's actually a modern myth. A huge number of Americans back then earned more money than the dollar amount of the personal tax exemption, which was as little as $1,500 worth of what qualifies as income for purposes of the tax. Lots of Americans earned $1,500 or more in regular jobs in 1925. In fact, all that was needed to reach that threshold was a pay rate of 60 cents an hour for a 50-hour work week, even taking two unpaid weeks of vacation during the year. Let's look at the census reporting for average hours and earnings in common jobs during 1925. I've done the calculations of the annual totals and pasted them in. Where 1925 numbers were not available directly, I've averaged the figures for 1924 and 1926.
St. Louis Fed publishes a few graphs illustrating the numbers at which we've just looked. So, lots of 16th Amendment era Americans made well over the amounts that would compel them to file tax returns, if what they made was subject to the tax. And yet only 4.171 million tax returns were filed, while more than 45 million folks earned all that money. So, were those 4.17 million filers just the slow folks of their generation? The ones who didn't understand something about the tax that everyone else did? Well, no. Pretty much everybody understood that the income tax is an excise tax, applying to specific federally connected activities and nothing else. Which brings us to another category of earners. Let's look at the numbers for this other special category.
So, once again, more than 45 million earners, many, many, many of whom earned well over the dollar amount of the filing requirement threshold, but with fewer than 10% filing tax returns. Pretty curious, unless you know the truth about what qualifies as income subject to the tax. Think about that, and realize that rather than being incomprehensibly moronic and authorizing a tax on everyone's earnings, something no one in his right mind would do, our grandparents simply knew something about the meaning of tax-related income that has become widely misunderstood over the intervening decades. To learn what has been forgotten about this oh-so-important subject, visit LostHorizons.com. You'll be glad you did.